and welcome to the Oddcast, the IKP podcast which brings you behind the scenes of a national touring theatre company. I'm Kirsten, the host this week, and each week we'll be joined by a selection of IKP members and theatre professionals. Joining me today are Nate, Joe and Ollie. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> this week we'll be talking about some current topics within the theatre world, but before we start, how are we all? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you, Kirsten? <laughs> well, I'm all right, actually. Today, while these two giggle, shall we? Yes, we'll just have a conversation. Yeah, I've, I'm pretty good, actually. I've had a good week. That's good. Has your week been good? Yeah, it's been great. We've we've now got a fully rescheduled Treasure Island tour, which is nice. Uh, and Beauty and the Beast's on the way. I've got a trip to a venue for a site visit, a new venue tomorrow, which is exciting. Very exciting. Um, so, yeah, it's all it's been a really productive week, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it's been good. How about you, Nate and Ollie? Would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, go on then. Uh, I've been learning the violin, Beauty and the Beast, which has been really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've played Ode to Joy like at least an hour every day for the last like week and a half. But you know what? So um, do I need to write that into the play for you so that it's actually there, or will you have? Progressed? Uh, I'd like to think I've progressed beyond that <laughs> okay. that particular rendition. Um, <laughs> but no, it's really good. It's really fun. Um, it's nice to it's nice to be learning an instrument i don't know i've, I've always liked playing them but i've never learned how to do one properly so it's, cool. it's good to be doing one for a show well why don't you learn when you've got time like, people always say like you're you're a bit too like once you if you didn't learn it in childhood then you kind of that's it although nathan i guess is a living proof that that's not the case but... <laughs> i think it's a mindset isn't it it's yeah. when you, it, i think when you've got something that you have to work towards there's there's a good reason to learn it yeah i just don't think i have the mental capacity to do it really i'm a bit so... did you start learning the guitar last year though yeah i did and didn't get past like the first <laughs> week <laughs> But we'll give it another go. I'm sure there's another lock round, lock, lock lock round? Round? lockdown, another lock round. another lockdown round the corner. So, are you? Oh, I really <laughs> hope not. <laughs> not. Yeah, obviously touch wood, but who knows? Who knows what's happening these days? No. How are we all feeling about the like current COVID? It's not a tier system now, is it? They're calling right. it a roadmap. Yeah. How roadmap. are we? How are we feeling about it at the moment? Because obviously they're intending for theatres. And I think it's outdoor performance specifically starting maybe around May 17th and indoor, actually. It's outdoor, Can I start again? indoor at the same time on May the 17th, yeah. which like the, the, the bit of me that spent a year with people going, it's safer to be outdoors. The bit of me that's, that has heard that for a whole year is like, well, why is it say, why is it not any safer to have outdoor performance than indoor performance? Because you've, you're saying it's safer to be outdoors so it makes sense that outdoor performance would be safer than indoor performance um but then the bit of me that has looked at the information that, and has found zero reports on any transmissions in the uk from theater or cinema like cinema is the same and it's the same in reports i've seen in australia and in louisiana in the us that there have been zero reported transmissions in cinemas or theaters what at all in those three places that the reports have been oh, done, yeah. zero reported transmissions. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting that that it's as late as it is really for theatres and cinemas reopening because, like, you look at places like uh, zoos and safari parks, and like, I've got kids myself. The second they open on the twelfth of April, I think it is, I am already thinking about taking my kids to a safari park and the world is going to descend on them because everybody that has a child has spent a year (laughs) wanting to send their child somewhere else rather than homeschooling them so the opportunity to take them outside and do something is great um but like an ikp show (laughs) show, absolutely so on the 17th of may with with every other theatre company in the world i think um is uh we're hoping to to get back on the road and we open that weekend with treasure island so it's it's hopefully great for us, um, which should be really fun. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really weird that that theatres and cinemas are opening at the same time as outdoor theatre. Because yeah. like you said, like, outdoor, outdoors, we have been told that outdoors is a lot safer than indoors. So I, I don't really understand why they have been specifically mentioned to be opening at the same time. If I'm if I'm really honest, I think it's because the people setting the rules don't see acting as a job. So they don't understand that actors 
who are employed can do the same testing and regular kind of the, the regular COVID tests that you can get for workplaces and for key workers. They don't understand that because it's your job, you should still be accessing those testing kits. Um, I don't think they, mm -hmm. I don't think they acknowledge that acting is a job like any other job. So that risk, they, they just see it as standing there and shaking <laughs> other people's faces, which increases the number of droplets yeah. and transmission or whatever. I mean, you guys managed it during last year. Did you, did you guys feel particularly safe during, um, the, the Wizard of Oz? during that time so obviously that was during uh well that just came out of a pandemic or well, out of a lockdown sorry um so did you how did you guys feel uh the testing went with that and making sure that everything was okay and safe to be honest i think the audiences were really good at adhering to it i think obviously the guidelines and stuff that we put in place they really worked and I don't know. I I never noticed an issue really from the top of my head. I think it worked. I think I agree with like what you're saying, Joe, about how like actors aren't essentially seen as like it being a real job and like not just actors, but the theatre industry and theatre industry in general. But I think like the other side of that is people are looking at it and going, but if we let outdoor performance be a thing, that includes gigs, which then includes like outdoor pub gigs and it means festivals as well and like other things so although I agree with what you're saying I think that if they were just like oh we'll let outdoor theatre happen it's going to create the same issue it did last year where there was like a big divide between the arts when really we should all be sticking together like I think it might happen in reverse this time though because pub gardens are allowed to open so I think they'll I think yeah. I think pub gardens yeah. will find a way around being able to have some sort of entertainment going on in the pub garden while people are drinking um so i think if anything outdoor theater is just going to get pushed back um but yeah it's yeah it's good that it's on the horizon hopefully um <laughs> and and that i mean all the big shows that were on beforehand are talking about coming back as well so it's it looks like theater hopefully will be back by summer i i, I do get what you mean when you say oh, if you let outdoor theater go on then that's one thing that then you have to let everything else go on. But out, outdoor sport, correct me if I'm wrong, but outdoor sports seem to have been opened earlier beforehand. So surely, surely you could apply that same logic, lo logic, sorry. God, I'm so I think like, I don't know, I think sports slightly different and I hear like the comparison a lot, but I feel like, like football's a big one, but it's, it's, I don't know it's I don't know how to formulate like the, the argument and I've thought about it a long time so I should really but um but it's even things like I mean uh, I can't remember specifically what newspaper it was or when this was so I don't want to take credit for like someone else's tweet but I saw a tweet that showed like I don't know it was like a graph and like a comic of um them talking about like how like I don't know like artists and like actors specifically don't really like they don't really bring much in and it's like the person who made that was an artist and they don't even realize like i don't know like art is in everything we all say that it's in literally everything like it's in the tv we watch it's in the adverts it's in the newspapers it's in how the news like newspaper layout is it's it's literally in everything so like yeah it's just frustrating it's frustrating that people don't look at it in that way when like the person who probably made that did an art degree or works within the arts industry it's just frustrating that people don't see that but i know that's not everyone i know that's not a majority it's I just hope the person who designed that graphic sat there really like soaking in the irony of what they were doing i, I <laughs> hope they took a lot of kind of dark pleasure from it because you couldn't do that in all seriousness and sit there and be like yeah i understand i'm worthless <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> I, I i if i was doing it i'd be like i'm gonna mess this up a few times so that they send it back and go no that's not quite what we wanted you're like oh you need me to do some more art for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think because you can't really place a monetary value on it, I think that's the reason why people don't view it as viable. But if, if you think about the amount of... It, it, it provides like a downtime for people. It's, it's an entire culture. A lot of our culture in the UK is based on our theatre and the West End and all of our, all of our uh, regional touring shows. Uh, speaking of Beauty and the Beast and Treasure Island coming out this year. But, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but subtle. Thank you. No. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't think people realise that theatre has a value, 
even though it doesn't necessarily have you can't you can't put it on a um you can't put it on a spreadsheet as such or a um you can't value it financially help me out joe because i don't really know you, it's hard to quantify the exact financial value of a show it's like yes. you go and watch an ikp show if you saw the wizard of oz and you would watch the four people on the stage and it's really easy to watch those four people and go four people made this show and not take into account that Gemma, our artist, made the beautiful post for it that we couldn't have sold the show without and Ollie marketed the show for us um, and Katie did some of the production for us and Charmaine made the the amazing costumes that we had for the show um, and we had Greg directed the show. There was there was so much stuff going on behind the scenes. There's other people that were involved. I mean, there's there's been so many people behind the scenes. I reckon a show that's got four people in it probably takes between 10 and 15 people to put on. Um, like Kathy and Frankie Absolutely. made our set for us. Um, and it's it's really easy to watch the people on the stage and just go, that's all the people involved. Yeah, and it or like just like making the scale a bit bigger as well. Like looking at the venues we went to, it meant that they had something within their venue and they were able to profit. And then like back when we were in the, I can't remember which lockdown it was at this point, but like obviously with the West End being closed and everything, there was like articles being like, Covent Garden, yes, the restaurants are still open, socially distanced and all of that. Like, without the West End, you've lost so many people. You've lost not just the West End, but a lot of, like, London theatre and theatre in general, but, like, just looking at the West End as one example. Like, Covent Garden lost a lot of money in their restaurants and their bars, like, just generally, because going to the theatre, like, yes, for a lot of people, it is just going to the theatre. For a lot of people, it's going out for dinner and then going to the theatre and then going for drinks afterwards. It's an experience. It's a day out for some people. And when you don't have the theatre, that affects the hospitality industry. It affects, obviously, the venues and stuff like that. Like, I want to talk about the West End a little bit. Obviously, a lot of musicals are doing previews and stuff going from, like, April to May. Um, I wanted to talk about something that Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, spoke about recently. Um, I saw this on a news article. I'm sorry, I can't remember which one. Um, but basically, he's opening up Cinderella to start in July. And I just want to say a direct quote, and I want everyone's opinions on it. So this is a direct quote. Um, we're absolutely going ahead. It's time, and we'll just open. And if they arrest us all, well, fine. They're going to have to get an army to stop us now. And I want people's opinions on that. There's more to it, but just on that initial quote, what are people's thoughts? I, I kind of think I, I totally understand where he's coming from because uh, the handling of the pandemic in terms of theatre in the UK has been a shit show is probably the proper way of putting it. Um, like yeah. it's it's been very much like tomorrow you close, like everybody is out of job. You all have no income, no money. You're all self-employed, so you can't really get anything from the government either. And we can't tell you when you can reopen. And then we were really lucky with Wizard of Oz that like they went live theatre was back on eight days before we were due to open. God, yeah. So we we like we were about to start rehearsals and I was like, I'm gonna wait until this announcement and they were like, You're back on and we I was like, right, so we're rehearsing today. Then great, come on then, let's go. Um and then at the end of August they went, right, you're closed again. Everybody's done. After after going, we're definitely gonna go all the way. Like people, people had programmed all the way through to to summer this year with a solid calendar of stuff they'd already moved, um, and had to drop everything again, and and we're in another lockdown, and you're kind of like, obviously, obviously it's a pandemic, and we have to be working to suit everybody and to make sure that everybody is as safe as possible. But personally having watched the news and read articles and listened to stuff that's going on, I feel like the general public were better informed about the situation with COVID and what would and wouldn't be safe and sensible than the government chose to be. It, it felt yeah. so much like the government ignored like rising rates and the fact that people like scientists were coming out in public and into into newspapers and onto the news and going, if you do this, this will happen and going, ah, it'll be fine. So the so theatre has just been 
just been dropped so many times. I, I fully understand why why Andrew Lloyd Webber is going, we, we're just going to do it at this point, particularly when you take into account the fact that there have been zero cases in theatres. Like, there is so much COVID safety going on in theatres. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. He... Oh, sorry. Ollie, were you going to say something? Well, I, I was just going to say, like, adding on to Joe's point, um, I think, again, we are quite lucky with IKP in the sense that our tour is in comparison to Andrew Lloyd Webber's shows, as was uh, comparatively uh, uh, had a much lower budget. And so we were we were able to take that financial risk, whereas Andrew Lloyd Webber's been trying to put out Cinderella for, what, like a year or two years now? Andrew Lloyd Webber's not even the one that comes to mind. It's those six drive-throughs that they were going to do. Oh, God, that got yeah. mm. Because Liverpool was expecting to go into Tier 3, and they had to pull those, and Kenny Wax must have lost hundreds of thousands, if not more, in just yeah. just in having set it up, yeah. and in the fact that all of these people who are creating theatre are creating theatre because they love theatre, and also because they want to create opportunities for performers. So, like, there's two week cancellation clauses in people's contracts, in everybody's contract that's involved in something like that. So, you cancel an, an outdoor thing the week before it's due to start, you're still paying, what, 50 people, probably, for two weeks' worth of work that you can't do anymore. Yeah. 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 That's what one of... Um, sorry, going back to what Joe was saying, that was one of uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's arguments was, is that, like, there's... Like, it's the science behind it. Like, he doesn't understand how, how people can be in restaurants without masks on, obviously, to, like, eat and all that kind of thing. Um, but can't go to a theatre like it doesn't seem to make sense obviously we're not scientists we don't know the ins and outs of it to the degree that those people do but it does bring up an interesting argument he said that he doesn't want social distancing when it starts up again because if they don't reach 80 percent capacity then they they don't break even which is a fair argument to make like in my opinion oh joe joe's pulling a face <laughs> well, normally yes fair argument to make um i i kind of have to say if you're putting a show on in a pandemic year like at the end of a pandemic maybe maybe find a way of putting either a less expensive show on or make make your overheads lower I, it's a really rubbish thing to say because obviously i want people to have as much opportunity for employment right now but if you have to sell 80 percent of your tickets to be able to break even at full capacity in a year when a pandemic is still ongoing right now mm -hmm. it's not the time for that show yeah yeah there's also that isn't it like what's like i don't know yeah well and i i think as well um i i don't know how how strict andrew lloyd Webber would be on that comment because if say if we were in the same position as we were before christmas where our rates were what was it like sixty five thousand new yeah. cases per per day i i think if we were in that same position now would andrew andrew lloyd Webber be able to be able to say that at, at the end of july because but to me that seems slightly irresponsible it's reckless that, but but i completely yeah. I, I completely get where he's coming from God, and, me I, too. and actually yeah uh, same what he's done over the year for lobbying and putting the case out there and talking about it and getting publicity for it and all of that he he absolutely has been at the forefront of getting theater back he has worked yeah. so hard and put so much of his own time and effort and money and and perseverance into it like he has done a lot more than other big name producers yeah. who also put on major West End musicals. He he definitely is the name that's gone out there and has put themselves at the front of this fight and has put so much work into it. He he absolutely does champion it. He he definitely believes it. So I yeah. I do fully support kind of that. And yeah. also if the roadmap says we should be done by the middle of June, then again he's he's got a fair argument in going, why tell us dates? If you're going to take them. Yeah. Off. Yeah. No, absolutely. I completely agree with that completely. Yeah. I don't know if I do, though, about the dates thing. I think it's helpful. I think saying it won't be sooner than this date, like that it won't be sooner in that sentence. That was a lot of work, but everyone ignores it. And I think that's kind of weird. Like the whole thing's been laid out as like, it's this step, 
and then at least five weeks after this step, and no sooner than this date, this will come in. But, but I think, but I think but that's I, a lack of understanding, not from you, from from the government. That's a lack of understanding of how much work goes into being able to do something. For, so rehearsals with adequate testing will be able to happen before the date that theatres can reopen. So oh. theatres can reopen from May seventeenth. So, but so saying, live performance can happen from May seventeenth is or no sooner than may 17th is a lack of understanding of the amount of work that happens behind the scenes before the show opens and that's sort of what andrew lloyd webber is is fighting against is going you've told us these dates and we have to be able to start somewhere just play yeah. devil's advocate here though is that a lack of under understanding or is that showcasing how much of an understanding that that they have and so they're saying no sooner than as a, as a clause in a contract almost to say oh well it won't happen it won't open no sooner than this rather than the exact date just so that if if we get to that date and then andrew lloyd webber wants to put on his show and then covid rates are still too high or they can't take the restrictions off they can just say oh well we did actually say originally it was going to be no sooner than i think i think I think in that way they're kind of covering their own backs. That feels very much. I don't know. I think. Sorry, Nate. I I I think the problem with is like I, I don't know. I guess I ignored it. My first point is like the government showed they're working. They've gone like it will be four weeks where we see how things go with that stage, and then we'll make a decision, and then all of the sectors will have a week to prepare for the reopening. You can't rehearse a show like you can't create like. You, a week isn't enough time to make a show yeah so like in that fact the fact they've put that statement out and said you've got a week to prepare shows they don't understand because they've said that a, a, a big west end theater has a week to prepare a show i <laughs> yeah. do just want to i don't know what use this is but the plan for cinderella is for it to be opening on july 14th so that's about three weeks after roughly about three weeks after the uh june 21st stuff so That's june 21st is no legal restrictions on anybody's lives at that point isn't it yeah but the plan for cinderella is to open it on july 14th so they've not they're not going like oh we're gonna open it on june yeah. 22nd or whatever Actually. they're just allowing a bit of space so what's everyone looking forward to this year this year in general this year i mean I'm like Resident Evil 8. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's so good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I played the demo like two weeks ago. It's amazing. It's so, so good. Um, yeah, so it. there we go. That's what I'm looking forward to this year. That, that like, tall lady is such a scary bitch as well. <laughs> <laughs> well that long fingernails. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Oh, scary. It. I think it's like vampires, isn't it? Yeah, it's like Resident Evil vampires. Yeah, mm, I know. It looks Jesus. great. It looks amazing. Yeah. And you got to like escape out of a dungeon and stuff. Nice. Yeah. Why well, isn't it made a like, theatre show of Resident Evil? I think that'd be pretty cool. Probably copyright. Um, licensing. <laughs> they made a film and it, well, they made like four, four films. They're not good. They're terrible. I love them so much, but they're bad. <laughs> I think, I think oh, if you one. don't care about their, their uh, relevance to the, games oh yeah then they're terrible um but they, yeah but the fact, the in, fact like, that like they don't they like that they're all based around alice and you're like but she doesn't appear in any of the other and games. when they brought in jill valentine as well and like she was just like a completely different character <laughs> honestly <laughs> anyway so what's people looking forward to theater wise this year anybody yeah anybody? Nate, what are you looking forward to theater wise Oh yeah. Um the theatre podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> seeing some. I know that goes without saying, but like honestly, I'm, like I was saying to one of my friends a while back, with like I've got so much money in theatre tickets in shows that haven't yet been like the date hasn't come out for them yet. They're just it's just there. Like it's 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 almost a full time job just tracking where all of the tickets have been moved to now yeah. because <laughs> because they were last year and now there must be about four shows i reckon that i've got that are just like sitting there and then i impulse bought a show last week tickets for a show last week because i was watching parks and rec um and it's i, I don't i don't even particularly like the show um but i i bought tickets for anything goes because megan Mullally's in it and she's great um so i'm looking forward to seeing that that'll be fun Nice. It's like a little random raffle of what's going to come first. 
Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, and it's not. It's definitely not the order I expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, what are you looking forward to? Um, I don't really know. Kind of like, like Joe, I've got like loads of money put into just tickets for shows that I was meant to see like a year or two ago. I thought you just stopped that sentence there. Like Joe, I've got, lo- got loads of money. <laughs> 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 Let the record know that Ollie mm. has no money. <laughs> um, <laughs> apart from that, um, I think, like theatre wise, I'm, I'm. I don't know if I mentioned last week, but so I am. A, I am a student at drama school, so I go to Lipper, um, and I am really looking forward to. Shut up, Joe. I thought you were just explaining why you have no money. Then I thought you were like, like I said, I, I, I am a student. I'm a struggling yeah. student. Let me just. Yeah. Go <laughs> one no, I'll pay it. <laughs> like, if anyone wants to pay my GoFundMe page. <laughs> 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 um but no i'm really looking forward to just like going back and actually being able to act with other people have you got any shows coming up when you go back uh well hopefully so we we do have there like at the end of the year there is a performance project um and so hopefully fingers crossed it will actually be live whether or not we have an audience i doubt it because it the show is before um theater indoors and out is allowed to open but our, our head lecturer is saying that she is fighting for friends and family, which I don't think will happen. But, you know, like, it's a, it's a nice thought. Like, even just to be able to act, like, in a room rather than on Zoom. Well, it doesn't take much to stream it, does it? So. No. Well, yeah, and absolutely. And she has said that she will be able to film it, which I, I, I would actually really enjoy because it, at least then I have that. I actually have, like, a concrete evidence that yeah. I did. I've done this course and stuff. And she was actually saying about maybe potentially making it into a TV series. So if that still happens, I think that'd be really cool as well. Oh, sick. Yeah. You have to like keep us all updated with that because obviously we're all going to want to watch it as well as the <laughs> listeners, of course. Yeah. Well, I'll watch it first. But... <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> have you got any when you'll get back, Nate? Uh, yeah, so I, I start rehearsals for my first like third year show here on Monday. Um, and then we've got a three-year rehearsal process ending in like the show's finishing at the end of those three weeks wow. um i don't actually know if there's an audience i'm assuming not i think it's just gonna be a recorded thing but but yeah um yeah and that's really cool to be able to like do a show again um god yeah because i don't know like like it's been a year and a bit since i've been able to like do a show with the school i go to so like you there was always that thing in the back of your head of like you're never going to get to do it like, it's just not going to happen and that's okay you make peace with it now it's happening it's like so no theater is happening again this <laughs> is cool <laughs> it's really exciting it is what's your next show kirsten what what do you mean <laughs> i mean what's the next show you're promoing right? beauty and the what? beast <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was a promo for that show that you're literally a title character for but don't worry about it just, oh. <laughs> just, I don't. <laughs> I do acting sometimes. Me sometimes. <laughs> Wait, what was the question again? I genuinely. I said, what about you? Just just zoned out. <laughs> oh no! It's like I'm not ju- like. Did you get that as well? Yeah, he said, "What show did? What show are you that's going to be in?" Oh, so I'm going to be in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> at all, didn't it? It's just a small blip on the radar. Yeah, really. it's nothing. Really. You know, just a quick little thing to tide me over. You know, hehe. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm really excited for it. I'm excited to be back rehearsing and like working with Murray and Greg, and obviously you guys again. Like, I'm really excited. Yeah. It's probably what's pulled me through the last year. Um, I'm also just generally excited for immersive theatre to be back. Uh, to be back. Sorry, just because like that's like I don't know. It's what I really focused on in uni anyway. Um, and I just love it. And obviously, I mean clues in the title it's immersive it can't really be something that happens during a global pandemic so i'm really excited for that kind of stuff to be back and to be able to participate in it um any promos for any immersive stuff coming up yet i'll be honest i've not really been keeping track (laughs) 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 no i've not had any emails from like the things i've got like newsletters and stuff from so i'm just kind of assuming that they're they don't want to release anything yet but that's that's just my assumption i don't want to be speaking for the whole immersive theater like i just you know industry for like theater to happen again because i'm i'm like it's so great having digital resources and being able to watch live streams and stuff like on your computer and whatever not live streams yes recorded shows it's so nice to be able to watch recorded perform excuse me recorded performances but um uh but it's it's just not the same as being in a theater 
but I don't know. I guess the, but the, this whole pandemic thing has meant that I think the online creativity of theatre companies has improved. I think there's so many more resources out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's definitely way more accessible than it was before. And hopefully it's kind of opened those doors again, like drama schools being able to make like live streams of things as well as like colleges and like, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's really useful because it means that if people can't drive three hours to see a show and also, you know, pay a lot of money and like we said before about it being a whole experience and all that kind of thing it just means it's more accessible and yeah no I completely agree because um from from a uh so looking at potentially from Nathan's viewpoint especially as a graduate you could argue that Nathan is going to get a whole lot more exposure because obviously because Nathan trains in Liverpool agents from um London might not necessarily like travel up or there's there's that travel distance whereas that that his showcase um, is now will or will be readily accessible to anyone who wants to view it. So it 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 it, it means that Nathan yeah. can get a lot more exposure um, <clears throat> for an agent. So I, I think that's really cool. And in in some way, you you just got to look at the positives, really, haven't you? I yeah, I think as well. Like because obviously a lot of things have had to go online, like show reels and all of that. Like a lot of people are actively looking for it online instead of going, oh, I'll just go and see it. People are actually looking on Twitter, which again, it's it's way more accessible because most people these days tend to have a phone and tend to have some kind of internet access. And it's not, obviously there's things like digital theater, which like, I think is pretty well priced, but also like universities and colleges tend to have like free resources and stuff um, like for their students and stuff. But there's also academic stuff as well. I wanna, I'm just gonna plug um, stagingdecadence.com because they are working on like a two year long project at the moment, which is basically just, I'm gonna use a direct quote because I'm awful at paraphrasing. So it's a project looking at how theater makers have been engaging with decadence as an embodied and active practice. And it's like, they have loads of different like talks basically from different researchers and lecturers, which just kind of talks about theater and just everything around it in like, I don't know, I don't know, just like research and talks and stuff. And it's free. You can sign up for free. You can get your tickets. It's just like a link. Um, they vary from like an hour to two hours. Some of them are a bit longer, but I've signed up for a couple. Um, I think it's good to keep the brain thinking about decadence within theatre and like the world and like our society in general. So yeah, yeah. if people want to, like, like I said before, it's absolutely free and it's really easy to sign up. Um, so yeah, if people are interested in that. Yeah. Definitely take part in it. Stuff like that as well. It has just made it so much more accessible to, like you say, people that wouldn't have been able to see the theatre before the pandemic. I think this pandemic has really helped theatre move along with the times and made it a lot more accessible to everybody who wants to engage with it. Because you know th there are a lot of people that, that haven't been able to see theatre, whether that's because of cost or travel or schedules or anything like that. But now that it's all readily accessible on the internet everybody who wants to access it can and i think i think that's such mm -hmm. a good thing especially because you know um, um, arguably like um a lot of people don't really get access to it because of because of um funding and stuff so i think i think it's really important that they now have access to that and hopefully that's reflected in later years and it carries on after the pandemic so that theater and acting becomes more accessible to everyone so yeah, I think, absolutely. I think we're in a really good place right now and hopefully that it will continue. Yeah, completely. And like with like, I don't know, like talks and stuff like that, sometimes they aren't as accessible because it, again, requires like traveling there or like people might not think it's for them or even if people are on the fence about like just like doing research and academia and stuff like that, like there's so many things online, like especially the one I just mentioned where you can just listen to things for free and you could just, I don't know, it's just a way of keeping it, even if you're just like, oh, I miss like sitting in a lecture or you miss just listening to people talk like about just things going on in the world and within theatre and within the arts and yeah, just like relevant topics and stuff like that. It's, it's really useful. So yeah, it's accessible for everyone. Like again, it's free. If you can sign up for it, sign up for it because it also gives academics and researchers within theatre a larger audience, and it like it just helps that as well. Because let's be real, academic isn't the most accessible thing. So, if it's something you're interested in, definitely go for it. Yeah, it's such a lifeline, and I think, um, like if you look back at previous generations, like my mum, my mum always wanted to be 
um, an actor or a singer, but she like she never thought she. she I, I was speaking to her about it the other day actually, and I, I I asked whether if she was, if she grew up now, whether she would have changed her career and potentially gone into the arts, and um, she said a hundred percent yeah definitely but back then it wasn't really something that people thought about actually doing as a career it wasn't it she never thought that it was accessible to her but now that she's seen that there are all these resources and stuff that are out there that you can do um i think she she definitely would change her mind and she is actually starting to you know branch out and have just like even have a look at these things because she's always been interested in it but she's never thought about actually doing it before and so i hope now and in the future that people won't take that mindset and people will just say, why not? Like, why can't I do it? There, there's nothing stopping me. There's all these resources available to me now. It's all online. So um, it, it doesn't matter whether I have to travel to London or not to do it. They, they can just do it. And I ho I really hope that sticks because <clears throat> I, I think that um it needs to be a lot more representative in theater of, of all classes and then more stories can be told which benefits everyone because that's 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 more content for theater and um more representation yeah absolutely i i completely agree i think that's the thing is like a lot of people aren't aware of the resources that are out there and quite frankly they are really hard to find a lot of the time because if you don't know what you're looking for how can you find it? And a lot of the times there is a paywall between things, but if we can give, you know, just access to anything, then we'll do that. And it's, yeah. Yeah. I think these days as well, there are a lot more opportunities. So if you look at something like stage door, stage door learning, which is a, um, it's an alternative to a level. So it's a, it's a two year BTEC course that is run in Cheltenham and, Joe, help me out. Where's the other place? Hinkley Point. Hinkley Point. Um, and so, and hopefully, it will be more accessible to others. But so, it's a it's a two year BTEC course alternative to doing A levels, where um, you study acting for two years, and it 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 just sounds incredible. Like, I I really wish that I'd have known about it before I did my A levels, because um, obviously I, I I don't have any regrets. I loved I loved doing my A levels, but. Um, I would have really loved to go on a course like Stational Learning because it 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 shows that acting is a, a viable career option and that you can actually study it and you 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 can do things with it. Um, well, yeah, I I think Stage Door opens a lot of doors for people who want to go into theatre and in the performing arts and just kind of anything really. I think obviously we myself and Nate we were taught by the person who like owns it and like runs it and everything and um like she's great and so they've got a show that's coming out on uh may 18th and may 19th at the everyman theater in Cheltenham called brass um so if you want to go and see that and support obviously young actors and young performers then definitely go and see that um but yeah like we were really lucky to be taught by her in a school setting and now she's been able to just basically expand that so anyone who's aged 16 to 19 definitely apply um this is just a little little plug um I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm sure we'll be able to get Jenny on the show at some point. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd love to get Jenny on the show. That'd be yeah. so funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm so glad that those options are available to people and that they don't just have to follow whatever their school is offering A level wise. So they they can they can take those opportunities and start at a younger date because I think interest starts when you're younger, and I think a lot of people these days. And like I said, was saying about my mum earlier, people don't realise that these opportunities are available for them. And so they think, oh, well, I've got to do my A-levels. And so none of that includes acting. So it's not a viable career. So now I've just got to go into business or uh, accounting and stuff like that. Well, and I think it's I think it's important to note as well that, that like Stage Door, the BTEC course, it isn't just for people that go into acting. I mean, there's there's people that have done the stage door learning course who have gone on to do degrees in law and who are working as estate agents and who have gone on to to other very successful jobs and 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 things that yeah. aren't theatre related. But what they've learned through stage door learning is they've learned the confidence and the people skills and the communication and the things that you need to be able to actually interact as a member of society. Yeah. Um. And it's it's a really interesting thing that stage door learning offers that it's 
it's such a rounded opportunity. It's, it it provides so much training and so so much potential. Um, and I think realistically, the quality of the drama teaching that you get at school has such a huge effect. Like I went to school literal decades ago now, um, and I like you 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 always remember the really good teachers like i i had an english teacher who also taught drama in sixth form her name like she was mrs Vale. Oh, she still is mrs Vale, as far as i were um, <laughs> my my drama and english teacher was called mrs Vale, and the, one of the things that she said like at the start of everything was it's a play it's it's not meant to be read you're meant to get up and act it and so like she'd she'd get this class of teenagers who were all moody and miserable and sulky and she'd be like, right, we're doing Hamlet today. And like, I went to an all girls school for sixth form that had, there were 10 boys in the sixth form. It was a mixed sixth form. Um, so there were, there were 110 girls and 10 boys. And so we were doing Hamlet and she was like, well, there's only two women in this. So let's just, let's just flip the genders of it. So I was Gertrude and the other guy in the class was Ophelia. Um, and, and like, we just pushed the tables to the edge of the room and got up and acted Hamlet. And even when you don't, like at 17 how many people have got a really detailed in-depth understanding of Shakespeare when you read it out like it's it's hard and when you're sat at a desk and you don't care it's even harder so just that pushing the tables to the side of the room and getting up and acting it and actually like feeling your way through the words is is so much more beneficial and it teaches you so much more than just how to read Shakespeare because I mean how many of us actually use reading Shakespeare in our daily lives but it's Exactly. The skills yeah. that you get from performance and from drama from a really good drama teacher who gets you up doing that are they're they're innumerable. They're yeah. they're so good and and people use them in ways they don't realise they're using them. Yeah. What... Yeah. I think a pivot. Oh, sorry, Never. Ollie. Never. I was just on the topic of Shakespeare and like literally everything you were saying, Joe. Like I think a really pivotal moment for me and what completely changed me in a way in a really positive way was that in one of my very like I joined year 10 at a different school I'd been like I lived in a different country like I it was everything was new to me culture like environment everything was really new to me and I was very shy I was very awkward and just I didn't have any confidence I was very insecure you know all of that kind of stuff and I did performing arts because I really wanted to do it and I did the BTEC and I I don't know it was something I was wanting to do but never had the chance to do and one of the very first classes was us shouting like Shakespeare like bad words if you will like swear words or like but they're not really swear words it's just Shakespearean language like out of the stage I was so scared to do it I was so so scared because I was like oh god I have to like put myself out here in that way and like it's a really big moment for me because I'd never like obviously it's something I wanted to try but now I I'm in theatre it's something I love and it's really brought me out of my shell like I can think of the exact moments of why I loved theatre and why I wanted to do it as a career and why it's my passion and that one of those first classes literally within the first couple of weeks of me starting at that school we did that and I'll remember that forever so it it is absolutely about it's not about just sitting in a class and putting it on post note uh, post-it note sorry it's not just about like sitting there and reading something it's about putting yourself out there and like obviously for some people it doesn't work and like for some people they don't like it and that's fine but yeah, I don't know. It was a really big moment for me being able to do that. And it's why I'm, it's one of the reasons I'm where I am today and why I love theatre so much and why I remember that memory. I don't remember a lot, like bloody hell, but <laughs> I remember that because it, it was one of the, f if not the first step of me being a theatre maker, of me yeah. being an actor, of me, and you know, doing all those things. So yeah, it's so important. And even if you don't go down that route of being a theatre maker or an actor, that the skills that you get are just so like transferable to everyday life. You, like you think about the amount of people that have to give presentations or um, hold meetings like every day as part of their job. Yeah, they don't have the confidence to do that. And if they if they can't hold a room for for two hours, then it it it, it doesn't work in that environment. But like drama teaches you how to how to hold the attention of a room and how to have the confidence mm -hmm. in yourself to stand up and say like and, and, and do that meeting for yourself. And so just because yeah. again, I, I think it just comes down to with theatre, you can't you can't put a value on it and you can't you can't 
you can't exclusively test it or anything in, in exams or anything. So say you have maths, there are right and wrong answers in maths. Yeah. Whereas with theatre, there are no right and wrong answers, but the skills that you get from it regardless are so important in everyday life. It's just that you can't... Yeah. You can't be... Absolutely. Academically. Yeah. And, like, like, I know that corporations, like, hire in freelance voice teachers to coach people to be able to give, pub like, do public speaking. And, yeah. like, so it's not even just a case of it, like, being used in hidden skills. Like if you don't get that training at a young age, then either you have to pay for it or the company that you pay, you work for has to pay for it yeah. for you to learn those skills separately because they are so invaluable. Like you have to be able to communicate with people. And if you can't do that, if you don't get that teaching from a young age, then like mm -hmm. it hinders you in further, like later in life, especially in like every job you get, you yeah. interview for like, God, yeah. you're judged on your ability to communicate and interact with people all the time um and it's i guess forgotten about like it's just overlooked for the sake of profit <laughs> mm -hmm. i think it gives you a voice i think the environment you're in when you when you do learn it within like an educational setting i think it gives you a voice because like like you said ollie and like you said as well nate like it, it's subjective it's there's no right or wrong answer and it's not like obviously you could say the same for like English classes but I feel like with theatre you actually have to like like drama and performing arts and acting and you know whatever you want to call it you do have to kind of stand up and you do have to kind of be there and be seen and I think that's the thing is being seen and using your voice and yeah I I really appreciate that environment obviously I can't speak for everyone but but then I'm like, there's there's people in the class who were able to express their emotions and express their feelings in those classrooms that they didn't get to express anywhere in the same way. Yeah. So, and that goes into university as well. Like, you, I don't know, it's like not knocking other subjects, obviously, because I'm sure they have like similar ways of doing it. It's just the way that theatre, I guess, has affected us. It's it, it really gives you a voice. It gives you the space to be vulnerable and it gives you the space to express yourself in a way that, you might not necess necessarily get to do anywhere else. Yeah, and you, and you, you, pick, yeah. you pick the subject you love, don't you? And so mm -hmm. you, people who take on chemistry or, you know, scientific, scientific subjects or academic subjects such as literature and stuff, they pick those subjects because they love them and it helps them and their and their mental health. If they were put into a subject that they hated, say someone who um, hated drama and loved physics, if they were put into a drama class, they 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 may hate that in the same way that somebody who takes drama and hates physics would have to sit into sit in a physics class and so i think to take away that opportunity for someone who loves and thrives and learns with drama to take away that opportunity from them um we got political again didn't we we did but it's okay to get a little bit political it's it's good to value everybody's uniqueness and allowing people at a young age to celebrate their own uniqueness is really important and and boxing people off too young I mean, boxing off people at any point is is awful, but boxing off people before they've had the opportunity to find who they are, yeah, and to find what it is they love about life is really harsh because, like, people are living who knows hundred now, so yeah. who wants to spend a hundred years not finding what it is they love? Yeah, it's like yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like that Disney film Soul. You need to find yourself. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. yeah. yeah. That was weird. I was just thinking about a Disney program as well. I was I was thinking about what you were saying about how people open up in a different way in, in theatre. Uh, there's a series on Disney Plus called Encore, which is um, groups of people who... Have you seen it? No. No, I'm just... I'm finding this really funny because I was also thinking about Wally. <laughs> when the guy is like, I don't want to survive, I want to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's it's about living. But so with yeah. uh, with encore, it's this it's people who did a musical in their senior year of high school or whatever. Um, and however many years later they reunite or some of the cast reunite to put on the show again that they did in their senior year. Um, and in some of the episodes, there's this thing where they like sit them down and get them to talk to their younger self about life and about stuff and and everything. And it's it's the weird thing that like. You'd never do that if you got the mathletes back together to have another maths competition. You wouldn't sit them down in a room and go, I want you to connect with your, your younger self and have a conversation about what you do. You'd be like, what's the answer to this sum? And that, that's yeah. it. 
Whereas with with something like drama, you you actively encourage that that connection with yourself. And I mean, it's it's not my favourite moment of TV in the world ever, watching grown adults cry about things that their teenage selves did. But such it's, good telling. It's <laughs> it's a it's a really <laughs> no. And actually, my favourite one of it is uh, the group that do. I think I think it's Showboat they do. And they come back something like 42 years later and they're all like they're people in their 60s now they've lived their lives they've had careers they've had families all of that and they're coming back together because they really want to not because they feel like they didn't do it perfectly 11 years ago not because they feel like they missed out on something or because they wish they were still performers they're coming back because they loved the experience and they want to do this thing again with people yeah. who were their friends and it's it's that must be one of the most uplifting episodes of something I've ever seen because it's all these people who didn't go into performing. They they went off and did nine to five office jobs, most of them. Um, it's but they all come back and they're like, I loved this and I still love this today. Yeah, forty years later. And it it, it just goes back to that argument of you know you you've got to you've got to work to live, not live to work. And I I personally you someone my granddad now. <laughs> Sorry, granddad. <laughs> um, but like. Personally, I, I'm going into theatre knowing that it's not like a quote unquote viable career and that like only, what is it like five? <laughs> yeah. But like only like, what is it like five or two percent of people actually make it as a successful? Two percent. Two percent, yeah. At two... any given time, only two percent of actors are working yeah. as actors. Yeah. And so there's only two percent of actors that are actually working in the, in the industry and I'm like, and I'm still going into it. I'm, I'm educated on that. I'm not naively going into it thinking, oh, I'm going to be like massive or whatever. But I'm going into it because it's what I enjoy, and I would rather, I would rather be w working as an actor and like even and and just and, and doing those jobs and still enjoying it rather than working in like a nine to five job or like a high paid office job because that's how you earn the most money i'd rather be doing what i want to do because i enjoy it and that's how i want to spend my life rather than working so that i get a few hours on the weekend where i get to spend all my vast amounts of wealth from my um from my you know my really high paid office job that i would obviously get if i wasn't an actor so <laughs> <laughs> thing is though is some people love that some people really thrive off of that and like and they have that choice that's exactly that's the point it's the argument is having the choice isn't it it's being able to it's what like some people would just rather prefer to have that security while for some reason we're all like no <laughs> <laughs> i, I want to work five different jobs a year <laughs> and like yeah but it's i don't know it's 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 just fun it's fun it it's not yeah, it's that thing that like you can't quantify with being an actor that you can do five different jobs a year and over that time you make five different families and it's really funny when yeah talking to somebody that's outside of a company or that's never been in a show and like they're like how are you lot so close like you spend all of your time together you're like because that's what it's like doing a show you 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 become this really close-knit family you're there yeah. for each other you're you are with each other all the time and then the show will finish and you move on to a different thing and suddenly you've got a new family and you always remember the people that were in shows with you previously but it, i don't know it's this special connection that you make yeah, that you, you do. don't get you don't get when you go and work you if you go and work in a business like you you get a work you get colleagues you get a work family you you do get people that you get on with really well but you don't leave them two months later and go and make this whole new family. And it's it's definitely not this connective kind of personal thing. Like, I, it's I, one of my favourite things is when you've got somebody that's not theatre in a room with people who have just been in a show together because they're yeah. like, do you all touch each other, like, all the time? Because <laughs> theatre people are like... Joe! <laughs> because, like, what kind of shows are you in? <laughs> Oh, you guys are all in too. Uh, but like, <laughs> but theatre people are like huggy. There's like because you have to get in each other's personal space. Mm. There's there's this kind of there is an understanding of each other's comfort zone, and like everybody has their own personal bubble and their own personal space. But you get to know that really intimately. So everybody is much closer than than outside of that theatre bubble. And people that aren't in shows don't understand it so much. On the flip side of that, I like as well, like from shows I've been in, is there are people that are really like, like what you've just said, like the relationships you've just just described. But then there's also people who are so distant, 
so so distance but everyone's like you could you could not see them for five years and then see them again in five years and they could still be that distant self but like there's still that like family element to it there's yeah. still that really close relationship because you have that connection where it's like yeah. yeah even if you have moved on to different jobs you still are doing the same thing and you still have that same understanding or something and i i don't know i really i really like that within theater just like and, in general but i really like that like it just brings so many different people together in the, like i don't know like if i would be friends with you i definitely wouldn't have been friends with any of you guys if it wasn't for wow Harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I don't. You guys are all knobs. I wouldn't have known you. <laughs> I mean, and for like, for like, it, theater has just given me like some like the best friends that I've, I've had, and like it just it really creates those connections between people, and like, I don't know. I I don't I don't I obviously I can't say because I haven't lived it, but I don't know if I would have been friends with you guys if we if we were all like say in school together or whatever um and we were all in our different groups would i would we would we have naturally connected who knows but now wally you're awful <laughs> <laughs> sorry that was weird <laughs> Very heavy political i know and then you all just shot me down <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're like nah i get what you're saying though i get what you're saying like too little too late <laughs> like i wouldn't know joe really like i think me and joe would be like just acquaintances that saw each other every now and then and said hello if i wasn't in theater yeah. like i don't think we would be like i don't know i don't think we obviously we wouldn't work together but i don't think we'd be friends either yeah would i don't you... i think i i don't think i'd pretend i haven't seen you in the street but i'm not sure we'd stop for a long conversation no but i think you'd be... i think we'd be like oh we'd be like hello <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you, like you, you say hi and you sort of don't know whether you're stopping for a conversation so you both kind of yeah. slightly keep walking but you've also kind of stopped and then you just both sort of drift and you're like okay bye then yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. yeah it just it just gives you like it gives you a stronger bond than what you would have got with with mutual friends like i i have friends from high school that i spoke to every day and like we were really good friends and then as soon as i left their company like we don't we don't really speak anymore like obviously we're still friends if any of you are listening but, <laughs> 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 but like i don't speak i don't speak to them anymore but like anyone that i've been in a show with i speak i like i will i will always stay in touch with them and i, I always speak to them still like because because it just gives you that bond and it gives you that family element and it's a lovely memory as well yeah. like it's just a really nice memory like you see photos on facebook and you're like oh this thing and it's i don't know obviously we're all biased we're all theater people we're gonna be biased but like i don't know i don't know we've just we just harped on about how much we love theater for the last half an hour i love it it's great <laughs> isn't that the purpose of having a theater podcast <laughs> yeah true 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 it's better than a game political like we got really heavy at the start so yeah. if you're still with us thanks for staying <laughs> thank you so much facing the death penalty <laughs> <laughs> you actually have some very strong views on that so let's not okay so next week's host is gonna be ollie yay <laughs> okay. uh, i'll get everything sorted for next week then cool i've just realized guys we're missing out we we need to get a little tombola so that we can put everybody's name into a tombola so that the host is randomly picked because like and then we get to raffle it off and everybody knows you can't have a raffle without a tombola so we could like put Oops. the names into the tombola and well, we could just randomly choose who's going to host it i love that Okay. okay, then I'm going to assign Joe to get that tombola and <laughs> you can introduce that next week. <laughs> <laughs> and Ollie, you'll be hosting. I'm so excited. Thank you very much, Kirsten, for the opportunity. It's <laughs> okay, don't worry. Thank you, everyone, for listening and we hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.